Huskies Leadership Workshop series. Um, this has been a couple years running now and we've had a lot of fun and I'm really excited that you're all here. Today's workshop is, uh, let me advance, vision and goals and how that relates to leadership on the Huskies team or on any robotics team. My name is Jesse Lee. I'm a mentor for the FRC team 3061 Huskies. And hi everyone. My name is Ritu Kama. Uh, I'm also a mentor on the same team and very excited to be uh, doing this uh, presentation today with Jesse. Awesome. So the goals of today are just to provide a foundation of where we're at as a team, where our vision and goals stand, and then give you some concrete tools for, as you are leaders in your field, give you some tools for getting those plans in motion. How do we take the goals and actually make them happen? Um, this relates to leadership because as a leader, some of the threads that we've been pushing through all of these workshops is to begin with the end in mind. Another way to look at that is begin with the end goal in mind. So instead of starting from scratch, starting from the beginning, figure out where we wanna go. Um, and another key tenet of being a, a good leader is providing your team with everything they need. And one of those important things that they need is to know where they're going and they make sure that they all understand a common goal and agree on it really hard to work towards a common goal if you don't know what it is. So we want to start off with, okay, we've got values, mission, goals, vision, culture, all these words that kind of float around, kind of synonymous, kind of not. We want to kind of dive into what the difference is, why are these important, what are the Huskies goals, values, mission, culture, and we just wanted to get your initial thoughts. So feel free to put whatever you think in the chat of why do you think having these concepts are important as a team for the Huskies? So feel free, go ahead, whatever you think. Feel free to add to that retool if you have any thoughts. Yeah, very interested to hear what the team thinks about what these things mean and what what do they stand for Huskies? Just put your thoughts in the chat. Awesome, got a few. Go farther every year, yeah. Gives us direction, yeah. An idea of what we want to achieve, nice work towards the same thing instead of a bunch of different things. Yeah. Yeah. Build on, yeah. Carry on for future years. Nice. These are really good. Yeah. This is awesome. Motivation, yeah. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, that's better than a lot of the articles I've read about. <laughs> so great job. All right. So if we wanted to kind of break down, start floating through what these kind of are, how they kind of differ, but we want to make sure that we're not trying to memorize dictionary definitions with these. Um, they can be fluid, but just to give us kind of a, a mental picture of how they relate to each other. We kind of found this graphic and put some of these in order. Um, and we added our own at the top. So we're looking from top to bottom, we've got kind of our, our base culture and values. And that feeds into what our vision is and what our mission is. And those things are the why, why are we doing this? Then those be, feed into our objectives and goals. What are we doing? What are we really doing here? And, and what we will leave off of today is the how, because you kind of covered that last week. So culture, 
is our behavioral characteristics. Values is what guides us, our principles and ethics. So slight distinctions there but in a similar realm. Our vision is what we imagine for our future. And what we, we want to distinct there is that does not need to be smart. If we've ever talked about smart goals before, our vision is not smart. <laughs> um, and then our mission is our purpose. And objectives and goals are our aim or desired result. A lot of you mentioned that in your answers. Um, so then we'll just dive through these a little bit. Um, and a way to kind of think about this as a team, here's some examples of how this flow kind of impacts a, a robotics team. So vision and mission, maybe creating the best robot in the whole world. Um, then that leads us to, well, we need to improve our shooting accuracy by a lot. And that would lead us then, okay, here's the specific things we need to do to achieve that. Another, if we're going to the soft skills side, instead of thinking about the robot, thinking about this in terms of, we want an inclusive team, right? Obviously. And to do that, one of our goals is increase compassion and empathy. And then the how is these workshops, which is awesome. So for Huskies, we kind of went back and we wanted to give you some examples of what other companies are doing for each of these, give you kind of an idea of how these terms are used in industry and what they might mean for the Huskies, but you're free to change this as you see fit. So for behavioral characteristics of an organization, LinkedIn says transformation, integrity, collaboration, humor, results. Uh, for Huskies, I've pulled some words out of our word cloud from our first workshop this year, and they're amazing words. <laughs> Compassionate, welcoming, collaborative, inclusive. For values, similar um, super awesome things that you have set forth. LinkedIn is on the left there, and Huskies, we have our own values along with the first core values and the gracious professionalism set forth by first which I think is so amazing. You're taking something that's already there, but going even farther. Then for our vision, this one is, here's an example from first of their vision and an example from LinkedIn. So they're very, very broad. Think way into the future. It, think if you could do anything, anything at all, what would you want your organization to accomplish? Big picture stuff. So create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. That's huge, right? That's amazing. Uh, transform our culture. I won't read it all, but these are big, big things. And what I noticed is your mission statement. Again, we keep pulling this from a few years ago, so feel free. We have an opportunity if we ever wanna change this. We are not set in stone by this by any means, but this is kind of a vision. Uh, it's broad, it's huge, it's awesome, it's exciting. You're, you're reaching far into the future, even though you've already accomplished a lot of this. Um, this is what your organization hopes to be and achieve in the long term. So it's kind of interesting to think about. And to contrast that, or maybe it's synonymous, we go back and forth. Then there's the mission. So mission, vision, you don't have to distinguish the two, but if you want to, a mission is considered a purpose or a calling. So LinkedIn, where their other one was to give everyone opportunities, their purpose or their mission is to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. So at their baseline, they exist to connect professionals, right? It's a little more current tense, I guess. And here's first mission. Is that for a second? 
So we want to do our first breakout and kind of think about what do you think the Huskies' vision and mission is? And we're leaving it kind of open-ended. And I don't want you to get too lost in the dictionary definition between vision and mission, but when you think about the Huskies, what do you think our vision and mission would be? So, uh, Joff, if you did have the handout link, if you wanted to provide oh, that. I um, forgot the handout link. Yep, I've got that I right here. Find it. Yeah, cool. Sorry Just about that. If anybody wants to refer back, and because when we go to the breakout, you will lose these slides. So feel free to use the link that we'll provide. Ellen, yeah, make sure to introduce yourself to everybody. Say hi. <laughs> Happy Monday. <laughs> All right, there's the link to the handouts in the chat. So I'll give everyone a moment to open that. Um, You'll have five minutes, right? Absolutely. And the timer will count to four, but you'll still have another minute. Yes, that is key. All and right. Feel free to jot things down and be ready to answer when you come back. Getting the last people assigned here, just about there. All right, I think we're in good shape. Perfect, here we go. This time we are looking for two or three hands raised and share out some thoughts. Srivasa. Uh, so a couple of visions that we, as a couple of mission, like one mission that we thought that we as a team emphasized this summer was like consistency, like especially like with Swerve and with uh, like change and making things more consistent. That was one mission that we thought we emphasized. And then vision wise, we thought uh, educating people on STEM and then making, getting, um, getting things better every year and making sure that we don't make the same mistakes every year. Yeah, like continuous improvement. That's awesome. Um, Safia? Yeah, so we basically talk about um, kind of base, mainly we focus on, I guess, vision, and we kind of talk about a balance between our um, having a big impact on the community and then on an individual level, learning as much about STEM we personally can, and then on a team level, passing down that knowledge to cultivate like a strong team culture. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Nikhil? Yeah, kind of, kind of going off of what, what people before me said, uh, I think we do a lot of, of great work uh, and, and our previous kind of mission or vision statement kind of supported this, that we we talk about how we're more than just numbers. And I, I think while that lends itself well to the community, I, I also think in our vision and our mission, we should, um, we should explain that it also finds its way into our team and how we cultivate a passion for STEM, not only in the community, but also the members of our team as well. And, and we, we give each other the skills to improve and um, create a better future for the team. So I think that's important to note that it's not just outside in the community, but also just inside Husky Robotics as well. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I liked to, in our group, one way that somebody put it was the mission is maybe more robot based and our vision is more communi community and team based. That's cool. Nice. Great job, everyone. All right. Next, we'll go into away from vision and mission and more into the goals side of things. Goals, objectives. The goal is an idea for the future or a desired result. Uh, goals represent decisions and commitments we make. So, and it's based at its most basic an aim for a desired result, right? Something we want to happen. An example, spend an hour in the gym four days each week. For the Huskies, maybe it's shooter hits a target 90% of the time, four meters away. Um, this is where we introduce the topic SMART goals. Some of you may have heard this before. We just want to kind of cover it briefly again so that it's 
fresh in our minds that to make a goal something that we can more likely to achieve than the not is making it smart. So giving it a specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based description. These things just make it a more realistic um, goal. So just we'll move into some examples, comparisons. For me, this is the easiest way to distinguish. Instead of, I'm gonna go to the gym more, this is my goal. Maybe we can make it smart and say, I will spend an hour in the gym four days each week. It's present tense, specific, measurable. Big emphasis on measurable, because how do you know if you actually did the goal? If you didn't actually put a measurement value to it? I know that's something we've been working on a lot lately. Another example, I'll work harder at practice. I mean, that's, that's awesome, right? But if you want it to be a SMART goal specifically, you'll do an extra rep each drill. Um, something that we did last year in our, the end of our workshop was had an extra workshop just for flushing out our Huskies major team goals. And this is something that's been developing for a long time. And at the beginning, they were shifted around and changed. And over the last few years, they've sort of plateaued into, well, not plateaued, but become more consistent. And these seem to be the main team goals um, for Huskies. And they kind of become similar each year other than change world champs to the current year. Um, and let's, I'll go to the next slide here. So rather than practicing making goals smart, which we feel like you're pretty good at by now, um, we have a worksheet available that we can provide later just to kind of make that process easier, but you, you just work through it. But um, to get to more of the, why do we do this? We want to focus on, okay, here's scenario A. This is our first goal. Have the robot done early so the team can, the drive team can practice. It's important, right? We need to have time to practice driving the robot. Scenario B or the SMART goal would be have a working robot completed as measured by all the features can be tested by the drive team by week five. And the drive team has one full week of practice time on all the features, right? I don't know if this, has this ever happened before in the history of a robotics team <laughs> that the robot's actually done early? Um, but it, it, I mean, we all agree it's something that's kind of important, right? We want it to, that'd be great if it happened. So we wanna talk about in our breakout, when we change how we state these goals and how we communicate them and how we measure them, how do these scenarios affect both our team behavior, how does this affect what members do, how they communicate, and how does it going to affect the team's outcome? What's more likely to happen, A versus B? So if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, we will do another breakout and you'll be with new people. So introduce yourself again. All right, so I've got it set up for another four minute countdown with one minute additional. So here we go. Thank you. All right, let me share my screen again. And we'll take two or three hands again to share out. Um, one second. One moment. Okay, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to bring up a point that me and my group talked about, about how we wanted to make sure that the goals were specific enough to be able to accomplish something, but not being so specific that we waste time making the goals. And it was kind of a battle between being productive and being 
specific was. I remember forgetting the correct wording, but I was with Jesse. Do you have it written down? Yeah, specific versus productive. I okay, that was, was cool. That? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. really tough challenge. Uh, Samika? Yeah, so our group kind of talked about like for the team's behavior, how we're definitely going to be more productive if we're all on the same page and we have like a pretty solid idea of what we want to be working towards. So we said we'd be more productive and we'd be able then we'd be able to like motivate ourselves to get it done on time. Um, and then in terms of the outcome, we talked about how like obviously like it'll actually get accomplished when we have a more specific goal and deadline to meet. And then also like the quality of what we're creating uh, will be a lot better if we're all on the same page and we're all working towards the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Alexander? You're muted. Sorry, yeah, and there we go. Uh, we just highlighted the fact that they're talking about defining things. So they just define the word done and early. So they just find the fact that like all features can be tested by drive team by week five. So they're talking about done as in the, all features can be tested and then early as in by week five. So just everybody's on the same page, which is like a key part of like that summary. Yeah. yeah. Nice. All right. Andrew, do you want to go too? Yeah, sure. We just briefly touched on how when you have poorly defined goals, like in scenario A, you kind of have incongruencies in what people believe the goal is talking about or how they should meet it. Um, you know, getting the robot done early doesn't mean the same thing to every person. Um, so it doesn't help them clarify exactly what they should be doing to complete it. So with better specified goals, right, you just have a kind of innate plan that everyone's working towards. Yeah, definitely. Like that goes back to our crucial accountability, right? It's hard to be accountable if you don't know what what you're measuring towards it's hard to like uh if you don't have a measurable done right how do you know when your accountability ends um that's awesome everyone did a great job the thoughts that we had too were um thinking about how our work affects others and thinking about how we can plan ahead. Um, so that's, I mean, you, you captured it all, that's awesome. All right. I'm gonna let Risu take over. Thank you. Let me just uh, get set up really quickly. Okay, so we talked about goals and SMART goals and how to write goals more specifically. Um, and again, goal without a plan is just a wish. So, um, you know, again, don't want to do a lot of wishful thinking. So if you go to the next slide. So as you're thinking about goals and setting the Huskies team for success, um, it's important to, again, reflect back on, you know, what we have learned over the last five weeks together during these workshop series. Um, again, remember, we started the series with diving deep into the servant leadership thinking, how it helps to shape our team's culture and values, um, strong team culture, uh, and, and the team mindset is just foundational to setting the team up for success in the coming season. Um, we talked about welcoming new team members, um, listening and responding to team members with empathy and compassion. What Jesse mentioned earlier on that sort of underpins the team's culture again. Um, and then with seven leadership mindset, again, helping the team members grow um, as leaders within the team. Um, then in the second week, we talked about crucial conversations and how uh, you know, how to identify when you do end up in a conversation that has just turned crucial, right? When the emotions of one person or both people in the conversation start ramping up. Um, if you remember from the workshop that week, uh, that Mr. John led, you know, verbal silence, verbal violence, these are all actions that we take when we've told ourselves a clever story and we have an emotional response to it. So think about, you know, when you are in a cru crucial conversation, uh, what tools do you have um, 
to learn to look and make it safe for others to share what they're feeling and, and you know, how they feel welcome on the team. Um, and again, remember to always begin with the end in mind. So again, just recapping and again, all of these things sort of flow into the conversation that we're having today. Um, and then finally, on the crucial accountability workshop, again, as servant leaders, you know, how you remove obstacles for the team members, getting their input, getting the buy-in, uh, providing the room to practice, finding solutions as a team versus, you know, the team leaders sort of mandating that, you know, it works the way you want it to work or it goes the way you want it to go. Um, so again, think about what we read in the fundamental attribution error article that Mr. John shared and how you can apply some of those principles as we get into um, setting the goals uh, for all the sub teams and getting into the build season. Um, so if you go to the next slide, um, just continuing on just last week, we talked about project management, which is super critical uh, about the how, right? So we remember we talked about the vision and the mission and then goals, objectives, and then tactics, you know, how we're going to achieve the goal. So project management has a lot to do with, uh, a rather effective project management has a lot to do with making, you know, the team successful. And it's really critical how the team set themselves up to using the agile methodology we talked about last week and setting up the sprints to continue to make progress across all the sub teams. So we get to the finish line. Um, and then risk management, right? Mr. MG talked about, you know, the goal is not to avoid risks at all costs, but to think about, you know, identifying the risks early on and effectively and proactively managing these risks. So we're maximizing the team's probability of success. So as we go to the next slide, you know, we wanted to, as we're thinking about, you know, Huskies and, you know, having an opportunity to expand the thinking and you know setting the team up for success uh, there's some additional concepts that we wanted to leave the team with as this is our final workshop series for things to think about um, again not new work that coaches or mentors or anyone is mandating that the team does but just some additional concepts to think through as in the coming weeks as you're thinking about you know uh, this 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 season um, so Next slide. Um, so one of the tools that is widely used in effective project management is called a critical path analysis. Um, so what is a critical path, right? This is this analysis or this technique was developed back in the 50s, it's been around for quite some time uh, to manage complex projects. And the purpose of finding the critical path or doing this type of analysis is to say, is to understand what activities in the project are critical, right? So to do that, you list out all your critical tasks or non-critical tasks. Basically, you list out all the tasks in the project along with some estimate of what time it'll take to complete these tasks and their dependencies on each other, right? So this activity cannot happen before this activity and this activity cannot happen before this activity. So you have the dependencies all sort of listed out. And then the next step is to find out which sequence of activities fall on the longest path from start to finish. So what sequence of steps that are all sort of related are going to take the longest time in the entire project development life cycle, whether it's on the software side, whether it's on your robot side or anything to do with machining or assembly, you know, whatever the different teams are doing. Um, so any tasks that fall on that longest path, or that's the, called the critical path, is now going to have an impact uh, in terms of how soon can we have the robot ready or how soon can we be ready for the competition. And so that really gives you an estimate of what's your realistic timeline to finish the project or finish the robot from start to finish, right? And then understanding this critical path and understanding the dependencies between the tasks on this longest path is going to give you a, an understanding of what's the realistic deadline uh, for the project, right? And um, when can we expect to have um, the robot ready? So if you go to the next slide, you know, you'll see an example of how critical path analysis can be used. So you can see in this diagram, you have different, different paths. Um, so all these activities are sort of happening in parallel. Of course, you have multiple sub teams. So every sub team sort of lists out 
the things that they're going to do and how long those things are going to take or those tasks are going to take. So if you look at the, this example, you have task A um, and then you know that's one path. Another path is task A to D to E and then the finish. And then the other path is B and C and then finish. So if you count up the longest path, which is all highlighted in the red, that's your longest path. So that's a critical path, which is nine days. Any activity that falls on this critical path is going to have an impact. So if task A gets delayed or D gets delayed, uh, for example, it's going to have an impact on what's the realistic end time for a project. So it's, it's just a tool to give you an example of uh, you know, how uh, project plans can be tracked for critical path activities. Uh, the activities that lie on the critical path, you obviously watch them a little bit more closely because any task that falls on this critical path, if it's delayed, it's going to have an impact at the end of the project. Um, the other activities, non-critical tasks are also important. It doesn't mean that those tasks are not important. They're also equally important, but, but if they hit an unexpected delay or a snag, that doesn't hold up the entire project, right? It, it's not gonna hold up other tasks and it's not gonna jeopardize the entire execution. So maybe they need a little bit of a different treatment versus tasks that are on the critical path. So something to keep in mind um, as you're thinking about coming up for a plan and each of the sub team is thinking about coming up for a plan for themselves. Um, you can think of critical path activities. Um, by the way, this diagram, if anyone's interested, is called a Gantt chart. Some people use it, some people don't. Um, again, the, this is not a, this is not a mandatory requirement for the team to use, but if people are curious to study this more, you can look it up. Don't have to use this tool necessarily, but the concept is to keep in mind, you know, how do you determine the critical path on your project and what activities are then uh, going to have an impact on the deadline? So if you go to the next slide, another tool that again is also used in complex project management is called program evaluation and review analysis or PERT. Uh, and sometimes I call the PERT chart. Um, I'm, I'm, we're, we're highlighting some of these tools just for the team to get the philosophy. Uh, but again, no requirement to use this, but the, the idea here is to think of the tasks uh, in terms of three estimates, right? What's the optimistic, um, estimate for a task, which is the shortest possible time for that activity, what's the longest uh, time or the pessimistic estimate, and then what's the most likely estimate. And so we can think of, you know, certainly for those critical path items, um, if you have some sort of an estimate of what's the most likely length of time it's going to take for us to do this task, or what's an optimistic time, what's a pessimistic deadline. And that's also another technique for the teams when people are doing complex project management and there's lots of different sub teams and lots of things that have to come together. Um, you know, this is another tool to think about, you know, getting a most more realistic timeline or estimate of when the robot is gonna be ready and when the project, you know, when, when we can consider things to be done. So, um, you know, another tool. Okay, keep moving on to the next slide. Um, and then as Jesse and I were preparing for this presentation, we were thinking about, okay, you know, wh what if Huskies was a business, right? The team has been around for a number of years now, 13 plus years. So, and, and we heard on the session that, that, uh, today, some of the team members talked about, right, continuously improving or adding more, uh, bringing the team up and, you know, improving our methodology, improving our processes. So if we were thinking about, you know, continuous operational excellence and continuing to drive improvements, we can look at some of the methodologies that are used in other companies or other organizations that are dedicated to continuous improvement. And what does continuous improvement mean? You know, continuous improvement is just a fancy term, but really an idea is to remove, first of all, identify where the bottlenecks are, right? Where are the bottlenecks in the in every stage of the project or every step of the project, and then continuing to improve and removing those bottlenecks until you get to a point where all the bottlenecks are outside of the organization, right? You don't have any bottlenecks left within the team 
well, the team is running like a well-oiled machine and the bottlenecks are outside. That's when you know that you've reached a point where um, you've continued, you've improved the processes enough that you don't have uh, bottlenecks within the team. You've streamlined the work and hence we have a better sense of what outcomes uh, we can expect from the, from the team. And there's many, many, this is an area where the industry has spent a number of years researching. There's lots of articles. There's some terms here, uh, such as lean and Six Sigma. So if people are interested, you can read about that. Um, one, of the, one of the very uh, popular one and one of my favorite ones is this idea of theory of constraints. Um, it was written up in a book, um, very popular book that's called Goal. <laughs> and today's workshop is, uh, vision and goals. Um, so the book is called Goal, and it's uh, it's a very popular management book uh, that talks about a fictional uh, factory. Uh, but the idea is again removing bottlenecks and moving the bottlenecks outside of your system. Um, so if people are interested, you can read about it. Um, next slide, Jesse. Back to you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. This is a little quote from Mark Twain. Continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. And when we found this, I was like, oh, this is kind of like what I've been thinking about is perfection or perfect is the enemy of done. So it kind of helps us remember that we don't need things to be perfect for them to be good. Um, so in this idea of continuous improvement, hopefully when I, if I can, should you let me know if you can still see my screen? Yes, okay. Something that we have continued to improve as a team is the, our main goals, as our main team goals, right? And last year we put a lot of work into this document and it's amazing. And we don't want this to be lost. Um, we took each of these main goals, had a whole bunch of breakouts, whole bunch of workshopping, took them and threw them into these worksheets to really make them as smart as we could, define them as much as we could. But there's room to divide them. We kind of didn't get to the point where, you know, we took these main goals as a whole team, but the idea was then to distribute them and how do they affect each of the sub teams? And that would be if your team wants to do that, um, a potential next step, potential workshop, not like this workshop, but just a, a meeting that you can get together and kind of dive in and hash this out even further if you want to. Um, I just wanted to show you this document again because it's pretty cool. There's some really cool stuff in here. So. Go back to this one. Um, all right, so looking ahead on that same idea is how do we continue to grow? How do we keep getting better? Which is honestly difficult because you are amazing. This is an amazing team. Um, so we listed keeping our our respons responsibility or ownership mindset that, that everyone on the team cares about what they're doing. They take ownership of each task and team player mindset that they take ownership of how they help others on their team be better, right? In everything we do. Um, you all talked a lot about how you want to continue to pass along the knowledge we've built up onto our future members. We want to keep growing our, our knowledge bank, right? Our skills, we don't want to lose them. We want to keep growing them. Um, the question we want to ask ourselves, am I leaving the team in a better place than when I joined the team? That's a good benchmark. Are the, is the team getting better? What can I do right now that's best for the team? If I'm ever stuck or wondering, oh, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Um, how can we remove bottlenecks for others? That's another, I, I, I think of it as a tenant of leadership is how do you remove barriers to others? How do you provide everything that someone needs? Um, being retrospective in the way that we are today, something that you've already been doing a great job at is using your keep, fix, try process. 
to look at how we can improve. Um, and what should we keep doing? We should celebrate everything that we're doing that is working awesome in this workshop series, right? Like, pretty cool. <laughs> this is obviously a great way to keep improving and keep building skills in our team. So we have more time before the kickoff. If there's more that you want to do to maybe you could define the vision and mission and values and culture, and just how some other large companies have done on their websites, you already have your main goals. Last year, the team did an amazing job of not only defining them, but then communicating them to all of their stakeholders, mentors, parents, teachers, everyone, uh, sponsors, everyone that you cared about, you showed them that these are what our goals are. And you could continue to do that with your culture, your values. So there's, there's if you are looking for room for continuous improvement, um, and, and what are we going to do with these goals this year, right? Like, how do, we, how do we put these into action? So I'm excited to see where you go with it. So again, just to summarize, we had some ideas, but again, you have a lot on your plate. You certainly don't have to do this. Um, dedicated session maybe to develop and communicate these vision, mission, values. Um, consider adding some of these tools. Maybe just spend a little bit of time looking them up. What is critical path? We kind of guess that it'll be most helpful during like our sprint planning meetings each week, right? Now you have terminology to communicate with each other. Um, hey, is this on the critical path? Is it not? Um, how long is this going to take? Is it an optimistic goal? Is it a pessimistic goal? So, um, yeah. Go Huskies. <laughs> I'm really excited for you. Thank you so much for attending. If you ever have any questions, you can find us each week. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you so much, Ms. Kama. This is wonderful. Um, also, thank you to all the mentors who contributed to this over the past uh, five weeks. This was quite the uh, marathon leadership workshop series this year. Um, and it was great for students to get to experience that. So thank you all. Thank you. you can always reference the slides and videos on YouTube. All right. They will be uploaded in a few days. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.